of our spaces with the living legends. My name is Orais and Franklin, your host for today. And joining me on this program to co-host today's edition is Dr. Mo and Kibati. Dr. Mo, are you there? Absolutely, with, with too much energy on the space today. So yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Oh yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> Our, yeah. our guest today is a very special person, uh, a unique woman, uh, one who has made her mark in politics and leadership in Nigeria, as well as in business and journalism, I would say. Um, uh, to, before we bring her on, I would like to, I don't know if, uh, today we had the Lagos rally, the mega rally in Lagos, and it was, it was massive. And Dr. Mo, can you give us some feedback from that rally? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're still reading from it. Some people are still uh, on, the, on the grounds. They haven't um, been trying to make their way out and um, uh, evacuate equipment and um, all the setups. Yeah. It was, yeah, it, it began from this morning uh, with so much um, expectation and um, palpitation, anxiety, uh, so much energy from, from across the street and all of that, you know, for, for some of us who went around the TV square and um, we had some of us also joined our principal right from the, uh, from the, uh, from, from, from their wedding state. Yes. And then we move through different places. But when we got into a, passing through a labor market, the whole place just shut down. It was like just sea of people, you know. The energy was so palpable. You know, it was electrifying. People were happy. Everybody, you know, from, from the sellers to the mothers to the fathers to the police people to everybody. Oh, wow. There is so much excitement and energy like we've never seen and experienced before. Yeah. It is palpable, it is edible, it is, you know, it's something you could feel. It was really crazy, to say the least, you know. Yeah. And then we made our way with people, you know, to the TV Square. It was so electrifying, you know. You had Clean the Drums, you had uh, P Square, you had J Martins, you had several artists and people from all walks of life. It was such an awesome moment. Lagos came alive today, you know, and... Um, so that's the experience, and we're still reeling from it. The internet was practically shut down with different re reports from different places. Of course, we do not, we anticipated and expect, you know, a little um, pushback, of course, which, um, which wasn't much because it's expected, you know. But aside from that, it was all, all high energy and spirit and excitement like never seen before, you know. I know that now, the will of the people are always seen in their, in, in, in their strength. Their strengths were made visible through their character today as oh. they, they move around, they share things freely, people gave up, people and were helping people. Nigerian you know, that's what that's the true Nigerian spirit. Oh, wow. Absolutely. So helping people 
and all of that. So, so that was Lagos today. You know, that's the energy okay. today. So, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, Kibati is here. I was afraid that she would not be able to join because she was very active with uh, today's program in Lagos. But I'm so happy she's here. I know she's on the road. So, Kibati, uh, can you give us um, <laughs> a sense of what, what the feeling Hi, good evening, guys. Oh my god, I think I'm losing my voice. Well, it's awesome, man. Today has been awesome, yeah. man, guys. Today has been amazing. I, I've literally just entered the house after what? Oh my god, guys. <laughs> I've been to some really, I've been through some really crazy things, right? I organize events for a living, I do shows. Yeah. In fact, I had an event at TBS just a few weeks ago in December, right? I had a mega concert that was wild. But guys, my eyes as I've never seen what I saw today. Oh, oh. <laughs> today was something else. Today was lit, lit, crazy. I mean, that type of energy, right? That type of energy I have never it's experienced. Like, oh, our yes, people are ready, right? What do you say? That our people are ready. No, no, no. Let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. There was something in the air. Yeah. Right, there was something in the air today. I can't explain it. Mm. Right, um, if you can, if you can put a a, a fragrance to hope, yeah, to belief. Oh wow! There was just something in the air. You know, there was this excitement. It was palpable. You could smell it. You could feel it. Oh, wow! You know, the look on people's faces, the excitement, the determination. As I was driving, guys, as I was driving home just now, very close to my bus stop, I saw a guy whose car was smashed. Right, I, I actually had seen this, the picture online today. The picture went viral, but the guy the guy drove past me, and this guy was injured. He was stabbed. He was hurt. He was treated at TBS, yeah. but he still came, stayed till the oh. end, and he left the venue same time as oh, me. Wow. He didn't care. The guy was driving. He was cruising on the express. He was cruising on the express. He was happy. His 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 windscreens were shattered. His car was totally destroyed. And he was still driving. It, it oh my so guys, like that I said, Nigerians have made up you mind. cannot describe yeah. the feeling. The, the, the feeling of man today was just I listen, guys. I'm still recovering, man. I have thank no words. Anyway, I have no words. Thank you so much. Our guest today is Her Excellency Senator Louisa Kofowo Rola Bukno Akerele, former deputy governor of Lagos State. Before we bring her on board, I'd like uh, to bring on board. Mr. Valentine Ozibo, the special assistant to Mr. Peter Obi on strategic alliances and technology. He's the brain behind what we are doing today and um, this series on the living legend. So, Mr. Valentine Ozibo, please can you give us um, some opening remarks? You're welcome, sir. Is he held up on the road? Are you? It's uh, good evening. <laughs> um, can you confirm? Is our special guest here already? She's seated and waiting. <laughs> oh, thank you, Your Excellency. We are deeply, deeply, deeply grateful for your attention tonight. Uh, we also understand how busy uh, this evening is going to be for you, and um, but we we are so eager to share in your wisdom, your experience, your knowledge. And as we, uh, you know, go through this very difficult uh, time, uh, but very consequential time. And I'm also glad, um, having experience, you know, what happened today in Lagos. I am so, so proud of the obedience. I'm so proud of the younger generation and even more proud of the older ones. Thank you so much, Ma. And uh, let me uh, seize this opportunity to uh, salute all our hosts, um, Oraye, uh, Dr. Mo, uh, Kibati, uh, Aziza and Co. And then all the, all the other guests, uh, please uh, let's um, have fun. Let's enjoy this evening. And uh, this is still a part of the series with the legends. Uh, Madam, you are a living legend. God bless you as you share your experience. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I have a profile for Her Excellency Senator Louisa Bukno um, Akerele. She's a Nigerian politician, a renowned broadcaster, professional journalist, passionate environmentalist a businesswoman and the former deputy governor of Lagos State. Uh, she was the deputy governor to Governor Bola Hamed Tinubu between 1999 and November 2002. She was born on the 30th of April, 1939, and went to CMS Girls School, Lagos, 
before she traveled in 1949 to Surrey, England, for her degree in law. While at the United Kingdom, she attended, attended Kingsley Girls School, England, in 1949, Regent Street Polytechnic, now University of South Bank, London. She was a member of the Honorary Society of, or she is a member of the Honorary Society of Grey's Inn, commonly known as Grey's Inn, into which she was called to the bar to practice as a barrister in England and Wales. She worked in, she worked with the British Broadcasting Corporation, BBC, between 1962 and 1963. She was the editor of Drum Magazine in Switzerland. She advanced her journalism career with Boys in Nigeria between 1964 and 1971, where she rose to be a senior producer. She became a client service manager at Graham and Gillies Advertising West Africa Limited, after which she set up the um, Akereli Advertising, where she served as the chairman in 1972. She's also the director for Abimbola Properties Limited and the chairman of Al Foods and Louisa K. Associate Limited. Chief Louisa Bukno Akerele was elected senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1992, where she served as the chairman Senate Committee on Information. In 1999, she was elected deputy governor of Lagos State in a joint ticket with Asiwaju Bolo Ahmed Tinubu. However, she resigned as deputy governor of Lagos State on December 16, 2002. We'll come to the story behind all of that. She was a member of the National Democratic Coalition, NADECO. She was treasurer of the Pan Yoruba Movement, Afeni Fere, in Lagos State between 1993 and 1998. And she was the governorship aspirant for National Democratic Party in 2003. In 1993, she was honored as the Moroye Lagos by Oba Adeinka Oyekon and conferred as the Mama Iwe of Lagos by the Students Union of the Students Union of Yaba College of Technology. Mama loves music. She loves reading, gardening, and Aerobics. Her Excellency, Senator Louisa Kofowarola Bukno Akerele, is the president of the Federation for Advancement of Nigerian Women. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to make welcome Her Excellency, Senator Bukno Akerele, to Spaces with the Living Legends. Senator Ma, can you hear us? Oh wow. Let's um let's try to connect her back. Okay. We have our technical guy who's with her, and um, I've sent him an invite, and we'll bring her up back. So, can you hear us now? I've sent him an invite, and we'll bring her up back. So, can you hear us now? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, fantastic. You're welcome. Uh, welcome to Spaces with the Living Legends. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Fantastic. Yes, Ma, you're, you're a strong and inspiring voice for women, not just in Lagos, but across Nigeria. Today, many young women look to you, to your model, as an inspiration. Um, I don't know. Can you, can you please let us have a sense of what growing up in Nigeria was as a young lady and how you manage to navigate your way up in business and politics as the shining role model that you are today? Well, I think, first of all, I would say I owe it to the family that I'm from. My grandmother was a very well-known businesswoman in Lagos. My father was a doctor and a feminist, though very conservative, but he encouraged 
women. He liked women's education. And my mother was a nurse. So we would say that I came from a forward-looking family who encouraged women to move forward. My father was very particular about the education of his daughters. Mm. And he encouraged us to go as far as we wanted, as far as education was concerned. Oh, wow. So education played a major role for, for shaping your worldview. Oh, definitely, definitely. Because, you know, um, I came from an educated family. Mm. My grandfather, on my mother's side, in fact, was qualified also as a barrister in the UK, I think in 1910. Oh, wow. 1910. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, what, what about <laughs> politics? How did you navigate? Well, <laughs> as far as politics is concerned, I think my father was the one who encouraged me because, in fact, he was the founder of the Egbemo Duduwa. Hmm. It was founded in his house in London, and he was the first president. Awolowo was his secretary at that time. Wow. So politics, I come from a political family, so to speak. Oh. My father contested election on the platform of the Action Group because, you know, the Egbeomo Duduwa later transformed into the Action Group. Okay. Um, some of us may not know. How, um, you can give, can you give us a sense of that history? Because a lot of people listening to you are young people who want to, who are eager to learn more. So please take the time to exhaust the, the pour yourself into us today, ma. Please don't be conservative. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you've already uh, been given my profile virtually from the day I was born <laughs> till date. So I don't think you need much more. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, my colleague uh, Kibati uh, would like to engage you on uh, something. So let me bring her up. Kibati, are you there? Hi, good evening, Ma. It's nice uh, to meet you. Good evening, Ma. Uh, good evening to you too. <laughs> good evening, Yuria. Thank you for joining our space. Um, we've been, I mean, we've, we've had um, such an enlightening series of spaces. Um, we as young people, many of us were just recently um, um, charged, you know, charged up you know, to, be, to become very politically active. You know, many of us young women like me in particular um, did not um, in the past, well, <laughs> some of us are new to politics. Some of us, you know, um, did not take politics very seriously until this era. You know, the era of um, Mr. Peter Obi. Uh, Mr. Peter Obi has inspired so many of us to join to join this train. And we are so happy. We are so excited. And that someone like you, who we really look up to, who is a role model to so many of us, um, young women like me, has endorsed the man we call our president. So thank you very much, Ma, for that endorsement. Um, and we are so happy to have you on the space with us tonight. Um, um, we just finished the Lagos rally. I'm sure you saw um, the activity, you saw everything that went down today. Um, oh, can you give yes. us your thoughts? Before I go to oh. my question. Oh, the rally was fantastic. It was really fantastic. And it made me feel so proud that <laughs> Ito B has now come to pass. He is there. He is going to be our president by the grace Amen. of God. Amen. Um, obviously, you have a deep history with Lagos State. Um, you were Deputy Governor to Bola Ahmed Sinubu for about four years. And um, um, you, 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 um, you took a unique decision. You, know, um, you took a very a unique decision, an interesting decision to resign from that government. Um, we, a lot of people are, are curious. Um, we would love to know your experience as um, the Deputy Governor to Bola Ahmed Sinubu, considering that um, he's running against our president. <laughs> Would like us to. I don't know how much you can tell us about your time as deputy governor. Um, would love for you to tell us as much as you can, and, and just give us um, if you can just walk us through the series of events that happened that led up to your decision to resign. You know, as deputy governor of Lagos State. Well, first of all, I'd like you to know that I was not very keen on becoming deputy governor of Lagos State. 
I belong to Afeni Ferry, and Afeni Ferry was the founder of the party AD, on which Bolatinumbu decided to actually um, contest as governor. And it was the elders of Afeni Ferry that appealed to me because it was obvious that if Afeni Ferry, who founded the party, did not have anyone who belonged to them in the government, then they would not, they would have completely lost out. So I was appealed to to become Bolatunumbu's deputy. Bolatunumbu himself, I think, certainly did not want me because he wanted to take over the party. And he obviously, because I was a Feni Ferry, it became a thorn in his flesh, to, so to speak. And therefore, there were all sorts of things which I don't want to go into here, but there were all sorts of things, of course, which led to our disagreeing because, for instance, he wanted to, me to join him to take over the party from the elders who were the foundation of the party. And, of course, I couldn't join him in that venture at all because I felt it was wrong. These were people who had worked hard through Nadeko, from Nadeko to AD, and then for us to scheme to take over the party from them, I thought it was wrong. And I think it was because of this that we had a disagreement. Because Tenumbu is somebody who, when he wants something, he expects everybody to fall into line. And I was not ready to fall into line on that score with him. And this is really, in the end, he made my life very uncomfortable as deputy governor, and therefore, and not only that, all sorts of other things took place. And my family pressured me that I should resign, and I did. Um, I, would, I would like to jump in at this moment because um, uh, this is Dr. Mo talking to you. I, I, Ma'am, I, 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 resigning, receding, um, you know, falling into that pressure, I mean, looking back today, is, is that not chickening out? Because it, wouldn't it be better for you to have been in the system to fight through? Well, fighting how? I was because... not given the portfolio. All portfolios were taken away from me, and it would have just been that I would have been deputy governor in name only. So what would I be fighting through on? It was better for me to get out and, you know, find another way for myself. No, I'm, I'm saying that looking back today and looking at what the younger people are doing from the vantage point that... Um, and the opportunities that you have, if you were to replay history, would you take the same decision? Definitely, yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, um, for what I get from this is um, the, the character of the human being is well known. Um, if you play it over and over again, except the character changes, you know, the result will still be the same. Uh, like they say, garbage in, garbage out. You know, so I kind of uh, get a sense of uh, what it was like, and it was. It's good to really hear this from you directly. Um, uh, yeah, but 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 I, I hear Mama. Mm. You, you know, maybe more than any other living human being on the face of this earth, you are one person. Considering the fact that we are at a very critical juncture at our nation's history, and looking at the front runners for those who are asking to become uh, presidents of Nigeria. And particularly because, and um, Emilio Khan has come out to say that this is his turn. You are one person that we really want to, I know you, you said you didn't want to dig into things, but you're, you're one person we want to listen to. I am itchy, you know, I am 
And that's, I mean, that's it's almost. Yeah, that's why we have her here. That's why we have her yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm asking Mama because <laughs> if, if you can, if you give us a little background, maybe to help people who are still sitting on the fence, those who haven't fully made up their mind to see why some of us maybe to help people be able to see your endorsement and all of that. It's what I'm asking is a bit deeper because it, look at what we're doing as obedience and people who are clamoring for Peter Obi. We are saying that we're not going to leave politics. We're not going to um, leave the space for other people to assume or do whatever they want to do. And that's why your position and whatever you say today is very critical to the discourse and where we are in our nation's history. Well, I think where we are in our nation's history is, in fact, what I would say, we are at a crossroads. And we either have to do what we think is right and fair, or if we get it wrong, I have great foreboding for the future of Nigeria. You see, we've got to look at it from the point of view that this country has a balance of north-south. The north has just finished eight years. And although I am a member of the PDP, I believe that Atiku, who I have great respect for, should never have come out. Obi was his vice president last time around. And I would have thought that the ideal thing would have been for him to put his support behind Ubi, because let us look at it. It is only the eastern part of the country that has never had a taste of the presidency. And I think it's only fair that they should be given a chance to actually taste the presidency. We have been ruled in this country by the North for practically all our years of independence. And I think the few times where a southerner has had the opportunity, we have seen the difference. I am not saying that the North is not competent, but I'm saying that we should try and be fair and equitable in everything we do in Nigeria. And it is not a question of Emilio Kong. I think we should say that Southeast Lucon. Okay, Ma. Um, all right, this is Kibati again. I'm still on this. Now that you brought up this question, I'm sorry, this conversation about um, North South rotation, I want to dig into this question of rotation because we, we, we touched on it a bit yesterday uh, when we had Pa Edwin Clark. Um, so I wanted to get your own perspective on it, particularly about the consequence, right? Um, I, I, I talked about, um, as you mentioned, he talked a bit about the dangers, you know, of um, not of um, of not rotating power, you know, in, in, a, in a country as diverse as Nigeria. But now I want to talk about the consequence. Now we have a ticket, you know, we have a ticket that seeks to continue northern rule in Nigeria for potentially another eight years. Then we have another ticket that has presented two candidates, both the president and vice presidential candidates are Muslim. In a country um, with, um, I, I don't know what the percentage, Christian Muslim present, I think it's almost the same, right, in Nigeria. You know, um, I want you to help us touch on how dangerous, how dangerous either of those tickets winning will be. Like, how dangerous, what, what's the consequence of, what, what could be the consequence if any of those two tickets win? Um, it went, um, and what would be their impact on national unity? What are your, I'm sure you've given, I'm sure you've given this a, a lot of thoughts. What are your thoughts on that? The, the consequence of, God forbid, either of those tickets winning this election? Well, first of all, I think a Muslim Muslim ticket is, in fact, a very insensitive ticket. It is not sensitive to the feelings of the people of this country. We have largely, mainly Christian and Muslim people. My husband was a Muslim. One of my children is a Muslim. The other one is a Christian. So we have to learn to live with each other. And I believe that a Muslim Muslim ticket 
does not actually have, would encourage that fairness and that balance between the two main religions. We have had a Muslim for eight years. And therefore, to have a Muslim-Muslim ticket, it connotes something to people who are not Muslims, that they are being marginalized and they are being looked down upon as if they don't matter. And really and truly, I think it was very thoughtless of the APC to have decided on a Muslim-Muslim ticket. They have not taken into consideration the feelings of uh, about 50% of Nigerians. Wow. I, I mean, for me, this is also my position. You know, um, uh, I'm a member of the PDP as well, uh, but I'm a steadfast supporter of uh, Mr. Peter Obi uh, because uh, as today it's not about um, political parties. You know, um, the emergence of Mr. Peter Obi has brought about what is called hybrid politics, where people have a choice to vote um, as they choose. You know, um, for me, uh, for the presidency, it is sacrosanct. Mr. Peter Obi is the only thing that makes sense. You know, and like you said, Ma, um, it, it was uh, thoughtless. You know, insensitive. You know, for for the PDP to at this point bring again another Nutana, as well as the APC. So there are two faults, you know, um, between the APC, uh, they call it a, uh, PD, PD, APC or AP, APD. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you there. Yeah. And, you know, and I think this is one of the reasons why so many people are going for P2B because they feel that, you know, they are not being regarded. Precisely. Precisely. Emma, you, you, you have endorsed Mr. Peter Obi as the best presidential candidate for Nigeria and the most suitable to lead our country going forward. Uh, can you give us um, your reasons? Well, first of all, it's his age. Okay. I think it is time, you know, I don't want us to have a s system where um, all our presidents are well, geriatrics, so to speak, you know? And then if we look at the, I don't know the condition of Atiku's health, but here's a man who is over 70. And I think once you're over 70, you, you're on your way out. My father used to say, and he was a doctor, that once you're over 70 and you're still alive, then you're doing over time. You see, then there's the health condition of Bolatinumbu. We all know that it's obvious that he's suffering from Parkinson's disease because, you know, his hands are shaking. And also, I would say that maybe senility is also coming in because... Um, some of the goofs that he has made, you know, it's obvious that things are not quite all right with him health-wise. Yeah. And therefore, I don't think that he should have come out. He should have uh, looked for somebody in his party who was younger that he could mentor. That is my personal opinion. And as I said earlier, I believe that Atiku should have, in fact, mentored Peter B, who was his vice president last time he stood for election. Oh. Um, please, ma I, want to, I want to press on this uh, Muslim Muslim ticket a bit further. Um, you worked um, with um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu um, as governor, when he was governor of Lagos State. Can you just, because this is one decision that baffled a lot of Nigerians. I remember, with, I, we, well, I, I personally thought it was sinister. I was baffled. I was, I mean, a lot of people were in shock. You know, the, we, we thought, no, he, he can't. He, he can't possibly. 
he can't possibly. And he did it. Why do you think he took that decision to pick a Muslim running mate? What, I mean, take us into his mind. What do you think? Well, the, the I, I, can't take, I can't take you to his <laughs> mind <laughs> because <laughs> that would be um, uh, 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 making me some kind of a a, a wizard or something. I cannot take you into his mind at all. But I would suspect that maybe he was pressurized into it by certain elements in his party. Hmm. Okay. Um, Kibati, um, Mama is ready. The people are ready. They've been uh, eager to ask her directly uh, questions. Uh, so I don't know. Right now, you and um, Dr. Mo can please guide that process and bring people up to the mic. Okay. Um. All right. Please, for everyone in the space, first of all, please kindly share the space. Let's have some more people come in into the space. Um. Please share on your timelines. Let's invite um, invite your followers to join the space. And if you would like to ask um, my excellency questions, please request for the microphone, and we'll bring you on as a speaker. All right. Please request for the microphone if you would like to speak. If you have any questions for her, for her Excellency, and we'll bring you up as a speaker. Um, while while we while we wait for um for 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 the speakers, um, or you, can, do you mind? Can we ask her a few more questions? I I, I have I have I have some specific questions about today's um, rally, to, about, about the um events that happened today. Please, just um, flow, just flow. Go ahead. She's here. Okay. Okay. I mean, we're in Lagos, right? Yeah. Um, this is Lagos, and I'm happy. In fact, I am happy she joined this space today in particular. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of concern. I mean, a lot of obedience groups, right? And the conversation tonight is this. Considering what happened this morning, um, we had at least four obedience stabbed. In fact, one of them was almost shot. If not that um, some private security, a private security team intervened. We almost lost, someone almost lost his life today. And one of them was almost beaten to death. So many things happened. Like I said, as I was driving home, I saw, um, I saw um, um, cars, you know, that had been um, um, destroyed, totally destroyed. Now, with what happened today, the conversation now is what will should obedience do on election day? Now we're worried. Like yes, in as much as was was, was an, it was a very successful rally, there's a bit of fear also. The fear is palpable. Like okay, it looks like we need to act because this felt like a preview of what. The bat camp, the corn eaters, would unleash on us on election day. I mean, these guys were so insecure today. It was just a rally. They did not want us to have a smooth rally. So can you just imagine what their plot plots are? What would you advise us to do, particularly in Lagos State? Because we do not want this to be disenfranchised. We need every we need obedience to come out en mass. So please, Ma, what would you advise us to do? How do we counter the threat of election day violence in Lagos? Well, I think it's up to the um, security. The police should, in fact, start planning how they're going to stop this violence. Because it was not only for the rally. There's violence in being perpetrated by the APC in Lagos State. You see people walking around with cudgels, beating um, transporters who don't pay them. And we are in a situation where we are APC is in fact a party that is encouraging the rule of thugs. And I believe that the security agencies must rise up to the occasion and protect the lives of people in this state. I think it is a disgrace that even, as I'm saying, I mean, it was at a rally that somebody was stabbed. Not only one person, I understand two people were stabbed because my people were at that rally. And if you see what goes on on a daily basis at the various bus stops, people being chased and beaten because they don't... Um, give money to somebody who is a member of some union or whatever. You know, it's a disgrace and it should stop. And I think it is time that the police rise up to the occasion and stop all this thuggery and extortion that's going on. 
I am going to come out to vote. And I know that the whole idea is to, in fact, terrorize us all into submission so that we're afraid to go out to vote. But I'm appealing to everybody, please, take up your PVC and go and vote because it is the only way you can free yourself from these people. If you don't vote, they will continue to terrorize us and we should not allow it to happen. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, just, to add, just to add to what uh, Mama has said, um, a lot of you know uh, the case with River State and elections. It's always combative. It's always violent because um, the, uh, the issues between the APC and the ruling party in River State are, are, are quite bitter, you know. Um, so what we did in River State uh, was to defy the assault by uh, the state actors. You know, because in all of this, you, you can't um, rule out the active roles of state actors, the police, uh, the military, you know, civil defense and all of that. So what we did was, in spite of all that they did, we ensured that our people went out to vote. In a place like Okrika, which is my community, uh, th th there, there were videos that trended around that period where women went almost nude, you know, circling soldiers and stopping them from um, uh, trying to alter the results at a collation center, you know. Those are uh, citizens' actions that, you know, are very well result-oriented. It's not, uh, it's not uh, about taking, taking up arms, you know, but, you know, there are very unique ways, you know. At, most importantly, I think an effective uh, strategy is to ensure that as these things are happening, they are being recorded and released to the public in real time. Because one of the strategies we used uh, in River State to expose the active roles of the Nigerian military, you know, in uh, our elections. So I just thought I should add this. You know, while we expect the best from them, we can also do our part, you know, by taking advantage of technology and standing our feet on the ground to say we will resist their efforts and ensure that our votes are counted, you know, on election day. Kibati. Well, I, I, Sorry, I want to say that with the electronic voting, in any case, yeah. you know, um, our votes should count. But the main thing is not to be intimidated. Yeah. And I think it starts now to get rid of all those touts and thugs that are roaming the streets right now before election, True. we should get them off the streets. True. So my question uh, um, was more in, in the line of um, what do, uh, what should obedience do when the security agencies fail us? Now, one of the guys that was attacked this morning um, reported, people that reported that there were some police and last map people not far from where he was when the thugs attacked his boss, the boss that he and some other obedience were. And they did absolutely nothing. And we've had this happen so many times in the past, where particularly in Lagos, um, areas dominated by Igbos, the Igbos, um, south, south, um, and people from the, not just Igbos, people from the South generally, um, who the APC feel probably will not vote for them. Get, I mean, you just find, you will, you will hear so many stories of violence, of disenfranchisement on election day, and the police will do absolutely nothing. So what do we do as obedience when it feels, when it feels as if even the police that we, talk, that we look up to are in bed with our oppressors. That's why I asked this question. What advice do you do? I mean, apart from looking, I'm pleading with the authorities to be fair, you know, to, to provide security. Uh, let me not let me not lie. Let me not lie to you, man. I do not expect to be protected by a policeman on election day. Right now, the conversation with, with within myself and other support groups is: What do we do? Do we need to raise billions? Do we need to look for um, private security? What do we need to do? So, um, you understand? So, um. <laughs> I don't think a lot of Lagosians feel, particularly what happened today, it was just a rally. We were all happy. We were dancing. We had DJs. We had hype men. We performed, performed caravans, processions. It was joyful. And they were attacking us. And the police did nothing. We actually requested for police assistance. And they, were, they pulled out this morning. They refused to provide us with cover. So what do we do when it's so obvious that these guys are in bed with the authorities, ma? <laughs> do you have any, any tricks? 
I mean, because we need to, like, you're right, we want more than ever before, we want to come out and vote. Obedians are, particularly in Lagos, I mean, we expect to have the largest turnout in the history of Lagos on election day. But what do we do to secure lives when the authorities themselves will not come to our rescue? Well, I think we have to force the authorities to do their job. They're there to protect every citizen, not only those who are in government. And therefore, we have to expose them and let the people know that these people are not doing their job. We have to let the people know. And we should publicize it. We should publicize every incident where the police are not up to the task. That is the only way we can put pressure on the police. Because the police are not there to take orders from any political party. They're there to protect all members of the public, no matter who they are or where they come from or what political affiliation they have. Um, sorry, Mr. Wright, do you, want to, we, do you want to go? No, no, go ahead. We have to force them to do their job. And the only way to force them to do their job is to expose them. Yeah. But, Obama, how do we put pressure on them? Because um, you... I mean, I've you said are, it. I've expose you... them. <laughs> expose every incident that happens. Okay, you know what? Let's go to our speakers now. Um, we've got some speakers on stage. Um, if you would like to ask a question, please raise up your hand. And if you would like to join as a speaker, like I said, please request for the microphone, all right? I've got someone, um, Obedient Gadgets. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Oh, Hi, good evening. good evening. How are you yeah. tonight? All right, please pose, pose well. your question. You have the floor. Yeah, um, I'm Usa by, by name. Um, thank you very much, Ma, for your presence here um, this evening. Um, I, I will ask my question, but I just want to chip in one or two things um, to some of what happened today. Um, I am a Lagosian by origin. And um, I want to give us a, a little idea of some of the things that, you know, they do. For instance, um, around my family house in Alagomeji, some of the trick they do is, in most cases, one thing that gives them the power to go ahead is because of one low turnout. Once there's low turnout, it gives them the morale to go about and perpetrate all sorts of things. For instance, in 2019, near my family house, the polling unit close to, and that we, that we used there, my dad and the way to use to, to vote. What they did to some people there was that they sent talks to flog people that are not willing to vote for APC. And from all the feel I'm getting, that is also what they have in plan now. Now, beyond what mommy has actually said that, you know, we can do, I think the other alternative that needs to be done is also to organize a private security as well. For instance, I chatted with my, uh, my cousin, Benjamin, uh, this afternoon and asked him, I said, what is going on? What is happening in Lagos State? You are showing us a uh, force, or what do you call it, the right day, you know, releasing video that anybody that tries anything. I said, today now, those that are in Aja, in many places, were attacked, but no police were found on site, or you didn't do anything, but what is going on? And I can tell you till now, he's yet to respond to me. And I'm sure if I call him later on in the evening, he'll give me some excuses. So the fact is that if you expect the compromise and the security force that we have now to give us security and ensure fairness, we are in, you know, for a surprise. The only thing I would advise is that an alternative private security will go a long way. And also encouraging people to come out and mask. For instance, a polling unit of 500 people, you have 100 people are coming out, or maximum 120. Before you know it, it's clearing for them to do whatever they want to do. 
So that's just my little, you know, addition comments. Okay. As it has been. Okay. Obedian, do you have a question for Excellency? I actually Thank wanted you. to ask. I want to ask some my, my own okay. questions. Please go straight to the question. Thanks. Um, uh, I actually want to ask, uh, you know, a question in relation to um, I remember, and then during your this thing with your uh, principal, after a while, you know, um, eventually. The government, I remember that within you and the principal, then a lot of things happened in Lagos, and eventually he had to switch to another deputy and the likes and, and the rest. So I want us to, I want to ask you, Ma, beyond what we know in the public, can you, you also uh, tell us more about the kind of person he is so as to also sensitize some people that are ill informed about the kind of person your former boss is just to you know make people know the reason between the light and the darkness. Thank you, ma. Well, I think I've already told you that the sort of person he is is somebody who is an autocrat. He wants people who will agree with him absolutely. And if you do not agree with him, then you become his enemy. It's as simple as that. Thank you, Ma. Next question. Okay, let's let's take Stanley. Stanley, Stanley Ebosi, good evening. Please, yeah. please, we don't have much time left. So please, I want your question in less than a minute. Please go straight to your question. You have the floor. Hello, Kibati. Yeah, Kibati, thank you Stanley. so much for having me. Please keep your question short. Yes, I did. I, I heard you. Good good evening. good evening, Kibati. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Um, good evening, Ma. It's such a honor to speak today and to get this opportunity to ask you this question. I, I'm, a, I'm a Lagosian by localization. I was born in Lagos. And I remember in 99 when you became deputy governor, I, know, I was very excited. We have this civilian administration in Lagos. And I, I was very excited. And following the news, I really liked you. I really like to. Now, just to my question, I, I have some experience in politics. I was a spokesperson for Articulated Youth Force four years ago, um, just a background. And um, we did some communication things. It was nice working then. But what I have to say, Matt, and my question is, um, we are, yes, the obedience movement, everybody that has worked so far as far as trying to win this election is concerned has done a splendid job. But I'm not thinking two weeks away or over two weeks from now. If by the special grace of God we do win, what sort of advice do you have for us, Ma, in terms of how um, a government is constituted? Um, I know that with the way we have a, a, a lot, good number of youth supporting Mr. Peter will be now, I do understand that considering the peculiarities of the issues we have in Nigeria, issues in quotes, um, if results don't start coming in very soon, it's very easy for people to go against him. Ma, with your wisdom, what sort of, um, and with your wisdom and as an administrator, what sort of um, advice do you have? What sort of counsel do you have for us? How do we carry ourselves after the first, um, if we win by the grace of God, how do you, how do you counsel that we young people carry ourselves uh, as far as doing this work of fixing Nigeria that has been, um, destroyed this last couple of years. Thank you so much, Matt. That's, that's my question. Well, first of all, how do you fix Nigeria? I think, first of all, you have to be honest. You have to, whatever work you're doing, remember, you do it to the best of your ability. Because a lot of the problem we have right now is that our society has become monetarized. We only think about making money and we don't think about how we make that money. Youths, I think most of you come from homes where your parents have been guiding you as to what is right and what is wrong. Listen to your parents. Listen to your parents. Because it's in the Bible, honor your father and your mother. A lot of us do not listen to our parents. When I talk about us, I mean you young people. 
work hard. Support people who are less able than you. Support the weak. And also, please have the fear of God, no matter whether you're Muslim or Christian. You're worshipping God. Therefore, please, in whatever you do, have the fear of God in you, that one day you will be called upon to account for whatever you do or whatever you do not do. That is what my advice to you young people are. Stop thinking that you want this position, that position. If it is written for you, you will get whatever position that you are aspiring to. But, as I said, have the fear of God in you, because I think what has happened is that our rulers now do not fear God. Wow. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much, Ma. Okay, um, we know we have about five minutes left, so we're going to make this very brisk. Please, guys, um, I'm not even sure we can take... We've got two more speakers on stage. Let's see if we can just rush through get them. Please limit your question to about well, 45 seconds, please. I'm going to quickly go to Oracle on this KVN. You have the floor. Please make your question as brief as possible. Are you, are you there, Oracle? Okay, seems he's not ready. Let's, um, let's go let's... to Daniel Joshua. Good evening, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Daniel, are you there? Okay. Um, Daniel, Oracle, are you guys there? Is any of you there? Seems our speakers are not ready. Okay, all right, over to you. Oh, well, um, I think um, Her Excellency has given uh, her closing remarks, actually, uh, with a call on the youth to um, adopt better values. You know, uh, it's unfortunate, as she said, uh, the leaders we currently have, who rather than inspiring us with uh, good values, uh, uh, leading with very bad examples. Um, I think on that note, on that note, we can um, close today's edition. You know, it's a very solemn, solemn but um, important point. You know, that we are truly determined to change Nigeria. It's something that can only happen when we are resolute, right? And when we know that we'll be making a difference by adopting better values. I don't know if I should give her um, one minute to, to wrap it up and then we can say goodbyes. Well, first of all, I'd say thank you very much for having me on. You're welcome, man. I will also like to urge that please, please don't be intimidated. Yes, ma'am. I have been on campaign where a gun has been pointed at me. Oh, wow. Yes. But I pushed the gun away with my own hand. Mm -hmm. And I said, I didn't steal. So why are you pointing this gun at me? Go away. And in the end, the chap said, ah, mama, please, whatever you can give me, give me. And give him something. So, please, I'm not asking people to go and face the gun or the knife or the axe or whatever these people have. But don't allow yourself to be intimidated. And all I can say is God will be with us all on election day to protect all of us. That is my prayer for everybody. That we are fighting for our rights. And God knows we're all fighting for what is right for ourselves and for our country. And therefore, I know God will protect us all. Amen. Don't be intimidated. Amen. Go out and vote. Thank you very much, Ma.
Thank you so much. We're, we're deeply inspired. Um, I'm sure Kibati, you, you, you were not. <laughs> no, at all. Thank you so much, man, for giving us this time. I know it's a pretty busy day for you, but we're so grateful. I learned a lot. Thanks for your inspiring words. Thank you for your message to young people, and um, we will make you proud. <laughs> Amen. Um, this election day, um, young people are going to fight harder than we've ever fought. Um, to take back our country. We desperately <laughs> want to take back our country. And we will definitely heed your words, Ma. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. So let, uh, after, um, everyone who has tuned in, we're very grateful to have you be a part of uh, Spaces with the Living Legends. Tomorrow we'll be having uh, Nai Wudu, a living legend, on this program. And the time is 6 p.m. Please Come early, reserve your seat at the space, and also invite your friends, right? Um, I want to thank my co-host, Kibati, and um, Dr. Mo, who, together with whom we have had an exciting time on the show today. Tomorrow, I'm sure, will be more interesting because we'll have perspectives from a different region of Nigeria. <laughs> I, I, I anticipate... Um, uh, something something very nice for tomorrow's uh, show. So please, uh, come in early, share the space, and be part of it. Until tomorrow, this is me, your host, Orai St. Franklin, signing. Okay.